I'm tasked to talk to you about cardiovascular pathology. Cardio, meaning the heart. Vascular, meaning the blood vessels. And pathology, which is of course the study of diseases. Okay, so um, I'll be tackling first on the blood vessels, no? which uh, is uh, being uh, played in this PowerPoint presentation. So here are our learning outcomes. So you can just uh, browse through them. So I've made this uh, detailed presentation. Actually, I really, um, really uh, took pains in uh, reading the chapter and presenting it here as simple as possible. And if I could, uh, I, I presented it uh, on uh, tabular form. Okay, so. To make it, uh, to make the pacing a little fast, um, I'll just uh, highlight the important points. Okay, so there's no um, substitute for reading and understanding. This is the uh, cover page on uh, of the chapter. Okay, we are chat on chapter eleven of the newest edition of uh, Robbins. So I am dividing the our lesson into three parts. Okay. First of all, it's about the um, vascular, the, the, the basic vascular pathology. Second is on uh, vasculitis, and third is on um, the the other diseases uh, about varicosities, tumors, etc. Okay. So um, the basic pathology in uh, vascular vas in, in, in the blood vessels. Okay talks about mainly on the narrowing and at the same time the weak weakening no of the blood vessels okay as we knew in our in our in your lesson in uh, histology the blood vessels are composed of actually three layers okay basically three layers they may be absent in some um, in some uh, blood vessels such as in the capillaries um, like for example, in capillaries, you don't have a you don't have a a, a layer, not the, the what they call this the mus muscular layer, okay, the, the smooth muscle, the tunica media, okay. But um, okay, but it has uh, a layer called pericytes, which can uh, function very much similar uh, as the the um, smooth muscle cells. Okay, so if you compare the the arteries, the arteries they have a, a um, thicker layer of muscles, smooth muscle cells, the tunica media, which is responsible for the pumping of blood towards the tissue or towards the organ. Okay, so therefore you have a, a thicker, uh, smooth muscle cell layer. Okay. And next is we have the uh, capillaries. So you have a high, uh, um, again, you have high pressure, high pressure in the arteries, okay? So that um, you must have a, uh, you must have a, a tunica media that is uh, composed of uh, a strong uh, muscular layer, okay? Next, next are the capillaries, which are um, responsible for diffusion of nutrients, oxygen, and what have you. Okay, so therefore, it has to be thinner, and the flow rate of the blood here is relatively slower to allow gas and nutrient exchange. As I said a while ago, the pericytes, pericytes are is, uh, are uh, are the ones that uh, take place of the tunica media. Next is the uh, veins, the, the veins which have relatively uh, a thinner tunica media because it is responsible for receiving blood back into the heart. Okay. Okay. And the wall components, of course, they are composed of endothelial cells, which is the inner one smooth muscle cells which all of these are are situated in the in the mix in, in the 
extracellular matrix. Okay? So, this is what I told you. Uh, I, I am presenting um, my lesson in, in notes form in, for your convenience. For your convenience. Okay? Um, so that, it, for example, in this slide, it's just one slide, but if you go back to your books, uh, it is contained in like three pages. Okay? So, you, you just choose, okay? Whether you can study my slides or you study the book. Okay? First, vascular anomalies, okay? These are either congenital or they might, might, might not be present at birth, but they develop in the early years of life. Okay? For example, number one is the developmental or berry aneurysms. There are true, true aneurysms. They are saccular lesions in the cerebral blood vessels, particularly in the circle of Lewis. Okay? And when they pop out okay, and they rupture, they lead to a fatal subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay? It is unrelated to atherosclerosis. Next, um, arteriovenous fistulas. When we talk about fistulas, uh, these are uh, abnormal communication between an artery and a vein. And in this case, it is secondary to trauma. Okay? And one, uh, and the, the complications are ischemia, second is aneurysm, third is high output cardiac failure because of the uh, immediate, immediate uh, transfer of blood from the arterial side to the venous side. Okay? Remember that in between there should be capillaries. Okay? Next, fibromuscular dysplasia. Okay? These are um, what they call um, abnormalities. Uh, these are irregular thickenings in the arteries. Okay? These are, um, the, the cause is unknown. Okay? You see, um, histologically, you see intimal hyperplasia and fibrosis leading to luminal stenosis and it presents as a string of beads appearance. Next, if you have anomalous coronary artery origin, okay? This, what, it, this happens when coronary vessels arise from uh, the, what they call this, uh, the same aortic valve, okay? Coronary arteries arising from the same aortic valve. Uh, what's the result? That it's, the result is that the coronary vessels get squeezed in between the aorta and pulmonary artery. So therefore, when it gets squeezed, the, uh, you have ischemia, you have in, uh, impediment of the circulation. Okay. So, so those are the abnormalities, vascular abnormalities. So let's go to what is, the, what is our main point here in studying uh, vascular pathology. Okay? The main point here, please listen, is that you have... Um, the response, no? response of the blood vessels or the endothelium towards uh, any abnormality in the blood flow, number one. Number two is the, in the content of the blood. Okay? For example, if the blood contains lipid products, lipids, no? fats, or sugar, no? advanced glycation and products, okay? the, you have abnormalities, you have um, what they call this uh, um, endothelial dysfunction. Okay? So, so, what's the effect? You have increased expression of procoagulants. No? The blood, okay? when, 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 when the endothelium is exposed, exposed to these uh, um, these uh, mater materials, okay, Th these instances, okay, the, the endothelium itself produces procoagulants, no? leading to a thrombogenic blood. No? So you have alteration in endothelial phenotype, which leads to a blood that is pro-inflammatory, okay, the, the blood vessel is a, a pro-inflammatory and thrombogenic. No? Therefore, what's the danger here? You have 
A, uh, the danger of thrombus formation, much later on. Okay? And aside from that, aside from the front thrombus formation, another main point is that naturally or uh, physiologically, because of this, uh, uh, because of this, um, what do you call this, uh, changes or, or, or the changes in the blood flow, okay? the blood vessel okay, produces smooth muscles, new smooth muscles okay, in the endothelial layer. And this is what I meant by it. Okay? You have production of neo-intimal smooth muscle cells. Okay. okay. So, new intimal smooth muscle cells which okay which are not which are proliferating yet non contractile these are not uh, uh, these do not help in the contraction okay rather they contribute to the narrowing of the lumen okay so we we learned so far that you have a, a um, the, the, the response response to abnormalities in the blood flow, okay? you have endothelial activation okay? leading to a endothelium that is pro-inflammatory, thrombogenic, and um, convincing to smooth muscle cell migration. Okay? So that, uh, that is the summary. Okay, next. The next point that I want to raise here is on hypertension. The blood pressure is a uh, product of the, of the cardiac output, okay? the amount of blood that is uh, being pumped uh, per, uh, per pump of, of the heart okay? times the peripheral resistance okay? or the resistance on the blood vessel wall. Okay. And the cardiac, fact, uh, cardiac output is a factor of the blood volume and the heart rate, among other factors. Okay. So that, that is the formula. And how is the blood pressure regulated? The blood pressure is regulated by this system. It is called the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, system okay so this is uh, normally in our in our in our body um, in, in the no, in the normal person uh, our blood pressure is uh, does not go high or does not go low because of this mechanism okay for example if your blood pressure goes very high what what your what your body uh, will produce or what the heart will produce is the atrial nitritic peptide which will allow the kidney to excrete water okay or for example you have very low blood pressure okay it will allow the kidney to secrete renin, renin to increase the blood pressure or for example this one aldosterone okay production of aldosterone from the adrenals okay allows the increase in the blood pressure further increase blood pressure so that the person will be in the optimal state that is in the normal okay however in the hyper uh, in the high blood pressure state okay you have abnormalities in the production in the first in the renin okay second in the um, which leads to renal hypertension okay uh, that's why um, patients that have uh, secondary renal problems, okay, renal problems, uh, will also have uh, effect. You, you have you have hypertension, okay. That is what we call uh, renal hypertension. That is secondary hypertension. However, there is another hypertension called essential hypertension, second secondary to number one excess excess uh, volume in the blood no? secondary to excess exogenous intake of sodium that is the number one okay? essential hypertension so when you have increased 
uh, salt intake it contributes to the where where uh, where salt is water goes right so where salt is water goes so you have increased blood volume leading to a higher blood pressure okay so next so these are the types of hypertension when we say essential hypertension the cause is unknown okay or the cause is uh, um, you have um, diet okay we have genetic factors etc stress etc uh, you cannot uh, the, the, the clinician cannot uh, pinpoint uh, any organic origin uh, or like for example a disease in the kidney okay but if it's secondary to a um, disease in the kidney that is secondary hypertension okay so it can be on those so aside from the kidney you have endocrine cardiovascular okay and neurologic okay and we also have a third type of hypertension which is uh, either um, the, the precedent is a, a essential hypertension or uh, secondary hypertension but here you have an accelerated clinical course that is what we call malignant hypertension and what are the features okay aside from these uh, end organ damage okay you have a grossly no uh, flea bitten kidney okay that is what we call malignant nephrosclerosis this is secondary to rupture of the blood vessels in the kidney and what is the what are the characteristic histological uh, landmarks or uh, histological features you have hyaline uh, arteriosclerosis okay i'm uh, i i'm sorry i'm talking about uh, vast um, uh, histological presentation of uh, blood vessels in hypertension okay? this is not only in uh, malignant hyper hypertension so you have uh, hyaline arteriosclerosis okay which are seen which are seen in uh, moderate cases of hypertension but if you have um, hyperplastic arteriosclerosis it is seen in hypertension severe hypertension you have onion skinning okay and also you ha also have pulmonary hypertension okay next so we we go to so we, we already talked about um what you call this um um thickening of the blood vessel we talked about increase in blood pressure next we talk about any changes in the blood vessel itself okay so you have arteriosclerosis which is defined as the hardening of the arteries okay and secondary to you have a uh, arterial wall thickening plus the loss of elasticity or sclerosis okay if you are dealing with small blood vessels that's what we call arteriosclerosis okay if you're dealing with um what they call this um, calcifications in the medium-sized arteries okay okay that is what we call Monkeberg Pacific medial sclerosis it presents with pipe stem arteries okay third if you have a uh, hyperplasia of the blood vessel secondary to insertion of a foreign material into the lumen and that is what we call fibromuscular intimal hyperplasia okay and the fourth one is the most important this is what we call atherosclerosis this is secondary to the build build up of plaque or atheroma in the in the um in the endothelium of the artery particularly in the artery okay so what are the characteristics you have the the fatty streak which is the earliest recognizable lesions in atherosclerosis okay atheroma is also known as the what atheroma is also known as the hallmark of atherosclerosis 
So you have the risk factors, take note of hypercholesterolemia, take note of the de gender. No? If, you, if, if you notice, um, postmenopausal women, because estrogen in the early, uh, in the premenopausal, in the reproductive years, estrogen protects um, women from um, um, hypercholesterolemia. Okay? Or atherosclerosis. And also have the rest here. Okay? Smoking okay? also is a risk factor for atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis. All of these contribute to endothelial dysfunction. That's why any deposition of, of lipids into the endothelium surely gets trapped. No? Remember that uh, in, in, in uh, endothelial injury or endothelial dysfunction, the, the endothelium is permeable. Right? So these substances get into the blood vessel. So this is the fatty streak. Okay. You have the atheroma or atherosclerotic plaque. You have the ulcerated plaque, which leads to the formation of the thrombus. Okay, and, and we'll talk about it later, the detailed process. And these are the most extensively involved vessels, no? most particularly the lower or, ab or the abdominal aorta, which is really uh, very prone to atherosclerosis. So what is the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis? No? This is the response to injury hypothesis. So take note, you, all, you, ha you have these uh, substances getting into the blood vessel, no? In, in, the, in the blood, of course, in the blood, okay? And um, these uh, affect the blood flow, no? causing the blood flow to be, to be uh, not, the, that, not, the, not the normal one. The, the, the blood flow becomes turbulent, okay? So here, chronic endothelial injury okay, causes the, blood, the, the, the endothelium to be dysfunction, dysfunctional, no? Increased permeability. Okay. Second is you have leukocyte adhesion. Okay. Third is you have monocyte adhesion. So because you have increased vascular permeability, okay, these you know, so for this is like um, this is like uh, in 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 injury in the tissue, ba, no? So wherever there is a there is a um, an injury, these uh, white blood cells go into the site, okay? And also take note, you also have, what? Lipoproteins, no? Remember, hyperlipidemia getting into the blood vessel, into the endothelium, okay? So, the, the macrophages, okay, gets activated, you also have smooth muscle recruitment. So take note, a while ago we talked about uh, intimal thickening. Okay? And these macrophages eat up, eat up the lipid. Okay? That is also, that's actually, uh, I think, uh, I think the, the lipid gets in the form of uh, LDL, no? low density lipoproteins. Uh, this, this gets into the endothelium first. Okay? before the macrophages, okay? they become activated, and thus you have here, they engulf the lipid. Okay? And what's the effect? The, the macrophages contain the lipid in the endothelium. Okay? This is what we call, the, this is actually the atheroma itself already. Okay? Um, what's, what's dangerous is that um, the atheroma uh, is really hard hard to, to lodge. No? It's really hard to detach the atheroma because you already have a neo-intimal um, layer of smooth muscle cells in the upper part. So actually, this is the atheroma and this is the lipid core. At the same time, at the upper part, this is the fibrous cap. No? And, and it, uh, the, the physiological uh, reaction is that it makes it that the blood vessel tries to make it stable, not the atheroma stable, and being um, trapped in, into the endothelium. Okay? So that's why you the, the, the lumen of the blood vessel 
become Star Wars. Okay. Next, so this is the these are the parts of the atheroma. You have the fibrous cap, composed of smooth muscle cells, macrophages, foam cells, lymphocytes, and what have you. You also have the necrotic center or the lipid core, no? which is composed of the lipid itself, no? among others. And going into detail, um, yeah, you have the monocyte being transformed into a macrophage. You have a what they call this uh, highly permeable endothelium. Then the macrophage eats up, no, eats up the cholesterol, okay, and becomes what we call as uh, activated uh, macrophages. And in the book, it is uh, it, it it contains what we call as the inflammasome, okay, and releasing some inflammatory materials. Okay, so in other words, um, the, the the macrophage the macrophage itself releases uh, inflammatory signals to the endothelium, making it inflamed no? in a, in a pro-inflammatory state. Another one, another picture. And what's nice here is the, what's nice here is, I mentioned about the LDL, okay? But here, you have the HDL, okay? If you have the high-density lipoprotein, what, it's, what it does it's, is that it transports um, uh, the, the cholesterol, okay, from the blood vessel, okay, or from, from, from the tissues, okay, into, back into the liver, so, or, for example, here it's from the be be blood vessel back into the lumen. Okay, what's nice? That's what's nice about the L HDL. And this is the pathway of uh, the what they call this uh, lipoprotein transport. Okay, what I'd like to feature here is that the LDL okay, returns back uh, cholesterol back into the liver. Okay, what are the, so we already knew about the atheroma, okay, and uh, so what else? So atheroma becomes uh, built in the endothelial layer and, and narrows the lumen, okay, what are the complications? No? So we're just happy that if the, yeah, uh, we, we're not happy, um, the, the, it, that contributes to a higher blood pressure, no, but what what else no? what is the complication so you have thrombosis once this plaque ruptures atherosclerotic plaque ruptures it releases materials that are thrombogenic okay? leading to the formation of number one thrombosis or thrombus second you have plaque hemorrhage or bleeding of course later if, uh, that is also uh, very prone to becoming a thrombus next the thrombus becomes lodged into another site, and what we call that is what we call embolism. Next is, what if the, the pressure no, made uh, by the, the thrombus and the atheroma it becomes very high? It leads to aneurysm or rupture of the blood vessel. Okay, so you have the consequences: MI, heart attack, stroke. No, ischemic bowel diseases and the others. Of course, the fibrous cap uh, as a, 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 the the, a com the component one of the components of the um, atheroma okay, undergoes. Of course, it tries to adjust. No, it's what we call the process of remodeling until it cannot contain anymore and the plaque ruptures. And this is the progression. No? So you have. You have a, a normal uh, blood vessel, it starts with fatty streaks. You have thickening because of the cholesterol. You have uh, atheroma formation. And these are the consequences or the complications. So what is crucial here is that if you have a thin fibrous cap, that is very dangerous to plaque rupture. If you have a thick fibrous cap, okay, uh, that, that can still uh, lead to erosion 
okay, leading to spilling out of the of the thrombogenic substances and thrombosis. Okay, and we have a fibrotic plaque leading to critical stenosis. Okay, so we are we already uh, mentioned about atherosclerosis and the and the um, what they call this uh, consequences of atherosclerosis. So first of all, this is the importance of taking in um, um, anti-cholesterol drugs. Okay, first of all, you have to treat you have to treat um, hypercholesterolemia from the source itself. Okay, so. We have uh, from the formation of cholesterol because of this uh, fatal consequences. Okay, so next, so we go to um, aneurysms and dissection. Now, these are weakening of the blood vessel wall, and if it's in the heart, in the ventricle, particularly, it's what we call ventricular aneurysm. Okay, but uh, yeah, and these are. The, these are the forms of aneurysm. You have true aneurysm, saccular if it's just one side, fusiform it's, if it's both sides, false aneurysm if you only have uh, the, the what they call this the, the the blood vessel layer is intact, but you have an extravascular connective tissue which contain which contains the the hematoma. Okay. Next. Uh, Dissection. Uh, dissection. It's just a. Uh, it, it means that there's a tear in the intima. Okay, you have a particular tear in the intima in which the blood seeps into the tunica media. So let's we'll we'll talk about these uh, in detail later. So what are the pathogenesis? It's a defect in the structure or function of the connective tissue uh, that composes the vascular wall. Secondary to Intrinsic quality of the vascular wall, connective tissue, poor intrinsic quality, no? such as in a um, defective uh, type 3 collagen synthesis in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Second is abnormal TGF factor um, signaling. Okay? Third is a balance of uh, collagen degradation and synthesis is altered by inflammation and associated proteases. Um, this means that uh, you have metallo uh, proteases versus uh, tissue inhibitors of metalloproteases. That means the, the the enzymes that eat up the collagen are more compared to the ones that build up the collagen. You have vascular wall is weakened through the loss of smooth muscle cells or inappropriate synthesis of non-collagenous or non-elastic extracellular matrix. Uh, and in, in histological picture, what's the main feature of uh, in, in, in this uh, aneurysms is you have cystic medial degeneration. You have depletion of what? Elastic fibers. Okay? Elastin. Okay? Compared to the normal. So, yeah. In the following slides, I, I have uh, I was uh, um, what they call this? Uh, I was uh, um, hardworking enough to to tabulate the features, so you can take advantage of it. Okay. So uh, in abdominal abdominal aortic aneurysm, the most common risk factor is atherosclerosis, as I mentioned before. Okay. You have severe, complicated. Uh, uh, in severe forms, you have complicated as atherosclerosis with destruction and thinning of the underlying aortic media. Okay. And you have three forms. You have the inflammatory, the Ig form related disease. Okay. You also have mycotic. Okay. Uh, what, what complicates is, is this is that uh, the aneurysm, aside from uh, atherosclero atherosclerosis, is being um, coupled with infection, mycotic that is fungal. Okay. Initially, mostly these are asymptomatic until they rupture. So the risk of rupture, rupture is directly related to the size of the aneurysm. 
So this is the ruptured aneurysm. We have a thrombus here. Next, so we're done with abdominal. Let's go to the thoracic. So the most common um, risk factor here is hypertension. Again, it is asymptomatic until rupture. And if it's sym symptomatic, you have chest pain, myocardial ischemia, dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing, hoarseness, and respiratory complications. Next, you have aortic dissection. Okay? So this happens when the blood leaks out into the um, tunica media. Actually, it starts from the tunica intima and leaks into the tunica media. Okay? And the most common risk factor is the hypertension. Okay? And it forms a hematoma. Okay? Again, until it ruptures. Okay? So, um, what's, what's the danger here? Um, the, the common site of uh, aortic, uh, again, aortic dissection, aorta, aortic dissection, is in the aorta. It's in the ascending aorta. Okay? Um, what's, the, what's the danger? From the aorta, the, the dissection goes into the heart, no? causing cardiac tamponade. You also see a double barrel aorta. When you see in cross section, you might be uh, you might be uh, misled misled by um, by uh, by seeing uh, seeing two lumens. No? But actually, the other one is a hematoma. And again, cystic degeneration, medial degeneration. However, no inflammation. So you have clinical features very common among hypertensive men, or to sixty years old. And if it's younger. Is found, they are found in, 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 in younger patients that have Marfan syndrome. So these are the gross findings. Okay. So we can just read. Okay. And what are the most serious complications? Dissections between the aortic valve and distal arc. Okay. So I'm talking about the first figure and the second figure. Okay? When aortic dissection involves already the aorta. Okay, aorta. Uh, the, the, what they call this, the, the aortic valve. No? Okay? So, yeah, when it involves already the aortic valve, that is already, already dangerous. Okay? But, if the aortic dissection Involves the distal part, okay? The distal part, distal, uh, um, what do you call this? Uh, aorta. Or descending aorta. That is less harmful, okay? So, what are the symptoms? You have a sudden onset of excruciating pain, no? Very similar to heart attack, but here it is, it is tearing, tearing, okay? And the uh, most common cause of death is rupture and bleeding. Okay. Clinical manifestations, cardiac tamponade, and aortic insufficiency. Okay, so we're done with, uh, with hypertension, atherosclerosis, aneurysms. So, any questions? So, okay. so next, we go to vasculitis. Vasculitis, uh, vasculitis uh, this is uh, the um, inflammation of the blood vessel. Okay, so it is inflammatory and often necrotizing vascular lesions. Okay, and when we say inflammation, what's a trigger? So anything, actually any, any substance you know, in which the the uh, blood vessel wall is um, quote unquote um, reacting to. Okay? So, for example, you have um, the hepatitis B surface antigen, you have um, HCV, uh, hepatitis uh, RNA, okay? hepatitis DNA. Okay? So, those are, these are um, reacting. Okay? So, next, what are the types? So, I'm, um, you have infectious, 
Second is non-infectious. So it is very crucial to to diagnose whether this vasculitis is caused by by a, an infectious cause because the treatment for infectious, of course, is antibiotics. Okay, or or like uh, for example, in 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 um, in in non-infectious in non-infectious uh but uh, non-infectious uh, vasculitis the treatment is of course control of the uh, control of the inflammation second um, by the use of immunosuppressive drugs okay so uh, infectious vasculitis you have uh, direct invasion by bacteria and fungi vascular invasion by localized tissue infection, hematogenous spread of microorganisms, for example, in infective or endocarditis. Okay? So when we, have, when we have inflammation, the consequences are very familiar. You have aneurysms and thrombosis leading to infarction. Okay, so let's go to non-infectious vasculitis. This... Uh, um, part of the lesson of the chapter is very much, very much, ve very much, very challenging to teach because the concepts are overlapping. Okay, so um, this illustration is very important. It's very, very important because this illustration summarizes the, the, the many slides that come after. Okay. So you have, um, I'm, I'm going to emphasize already here, you have the types of non-infectious vasculitis. Number one, we have the large vessel vasculitis as exemplified by granulomatous diseases caused by giant cell arthritis and Takayasu arthritis. Next is you have medium vessel vasculitis. So um, affecting arteries and arterioles, okay? And if it's immune complex mediated, okay? It's, it is uh, polyarteritis nodosa. If it's anti-endothelial cell antibodies mediated, this is Kawasaki disease, okay? If it's small cell vasculitis, arterioles, capillaries, venules, these are number one. You have um, poly, um, microscopic polyangitis. When you have um, small cell vasculitis without asthma or granuloma, with, if it contains granuloma without asthma, that is granulomatosis with polyangitis. Polyangitis, many blood vessels, okay, and we will learn it later. When it when when, when it has um, asthma. Okay, that is what we call church cross syndrome. So I'm teaching you how to um, the, the important what hallmarks in the following vasculitis. No? Because in the following slides you might be uh, confused. Okay, so I'm highlighting already. So you can read on in this. No, take note of the clinical history. Okay. So. Uh, before we go into the into the um, examples of, of vasculitis, okay, so let's go to the cause of this uh, non-infectious uh, vasculitis. It's either secondary to immune complex formation, uh, uh, wherein, for example, in cases of SLE, you have immune complex deposition. You have immune complex. Uh, this is another term for antigen antibody complex. Okay, these complexes deposit into the blood vessels, into the particularly in the blood vessels, okay, causing inflammation. Next, if it's not secondary to immune complex, it's secondary to what we call as palsy immune condition. You have no immune complex formation seen. However, it is secondary to formation of antibodies. You don't see the antigen. Okay? Although here, you have interaction of antibodies and uh, neutrophilic cytoplasmic antigens, but 
if, if you go, if, if, if you check the blood, you don't see the antigen. So that is what we call posi-immune. Okay, so the an anka, okay, anka, anka, uh, you have two types. You have the C anka, or what we call as the anti protonase C. You have the P anka, which is the anti MPO myeloperoxidase. Okay, and what is the pathogenesis? It is uh, the 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 antibody, no, the anka, okay, reacting with the neutrophils. Okay. So you have the an antibody and the anka or anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody reacting with the neutrophils of the blood. Okay. Releasing um, reactive oxygen species and granule contents. Okay. So you can you can um, um, read it read on your own. Next is you have anti endothelial cell body formation, such as in Kawasaki disease, as we mentioned a while ago. So let's go to uh, into detail the um, following vasculated discs. Number one, you have giant cell temporal arthritis. If it's gyromatous and involves large vessel, do not forget giant cell arthritis. And at the same time, it involves elderly, no? particularly patients that have that are um, older than 50 or 50 and above. Okay? That is what we call giant cell temporal arthritis. Temporal because you see the arthritis uh, inflammation of the uh, temporal um, arteries, okay? of course, in the head of the, of the patient, old patient. And it is painful. Okay? Headache. Okay? So this is the pain is secondary to the inflamed endothelium. Okay? Of course, higher pressure, okay, plus the pain. So that is. So very familiar, right? We see this in old patients. Next. If you have a uh, granulomatous, again, granulomatous um, um, kind of, uh, vasculitis, granulomatous, uh, large, large uh, arteries, uh, and, and dealing with younger patients, okay, less than 50. And what they call this, the, the patient presents with marked weakening of the pulses. So, answer immediately, Takayasu arthritis. Okay? The main feature here is a weakness of the peripheral pulses, leading to the following clinical features. Autoimmune etiology, we, knew, we know that it involves immune complex formation. So this is the, the um, gross and histological presentations. Okay, so this is uh, a table or tabular presentation I saw in, uh, I found in uh, USMLE Step 1 Reviewer. It's very helpful in, in uh, summarizing your information. Okay, next is you have polyarthritis nodosa. When you hear polyarthritis arthritis nodosa, it is very much associated with hepatitis B. No? It is secondary to the formation of the, what we call as the antigen, antibody of the hepatitis B virus. Okay? And it involves medium-sized arteries, small to medium-sized, and it is, and it spares the pulmonary circulation. Um, because later, we will be encountering uh, vasculitidis, which uh, are very much like uh, polyarthritis nodosa. However, it involves the pulmonary circulation. Okay? So you can, can uh, read on the gross and microscopic. The ones that I, ha that I highlight are the crucial, crucial, uh, um, crucial information. 
you have rapidly accelerating hypertension. Okay? So if it happens in, uh, yeah, we see it in patients that, that, are, uh, that have uh, hepatitis B. So what more? No? You have already have uh, portal hypertension and hepatitis B. Then you have uh, much uh, uh, more uh, aggravated hypertension when you have uh, polyarthritis nodosa. So, next, uh, there, you have fibrinoid necrosis, okay, narrowing the lumen. Next, so we're, we're still in medium, medium, uh, medium vessel va vasculitis. Okay, so, we have we here we have a uh, Kawasaki disease or the mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. Okay, and this is found among children. And what's the etiology? It is secondary to the anti-endothelial cell uh, antibody. Okay, so I think. Do I have a drawing later? Yeah, I have. Okay. So, Kawasaki disease, you have conjunctival oral erythemia blistering and cervical lymph node enlargement. That's why you have mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. Thromboangitis obliterans. Again, this is uh, uh, an arthritis uh, that involves medium to small uh, blood vessels. Okay, and it is particularly seen in heavy smokers. No? Um, President Duterte has burger disease because he's, he is a heavy smoker. And what else? Um, what are the features? You have Raynaud's phenomenon. Okay, you have claudication. Okay, causing the pain. And here, you also have a thrombus no? that contains microabscesses surrounded by granulomatous inflammation. So there, no? so you have a thrombus at the same time, abscess formation. So, double trouble. No? So here, so this is a, a summary of uh, the, the information that we mentioned just uh, recently. So mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome involves the oral mucosa here. In, so you have, if I'm not mistaken, this is the strawberry tongue, oral mucositis. Okay, so next. So we're done with medium. Art, um, art, um, vasculitis, medium uh, size vasculitis. We go to small size vasculitis. So, first we go to microscopic polyangitis. The other term is hypersensitivity vasculitis or leukocytoplastic vasculitis. It is um, systemic in involvement. No? Um, but it is um, more common among in, in the kidney, glomerulonephritis, and in the lungs. Okay? And the, the pathology here is, again, ANCA formation, or, no, particularly the MPO ANCA or the P ANCA. Okay? Um, what's the presentation? What's the presentation of microscopic polyangitis, it doesn't have a granuloma. Does the patient have asthma or cough? Wala. No. Wala. Blood, blood siguro, hemoptysis. No? Okay. Again, it is a posi, little or, or no immunoglobulin. It is a posi immune injury. Again, because you cannot see the antigen. If it's if the antigen is present, then that's immune complex. Okay, so here, so leukocytoplastic because 
is si fragmentation of neutrophils and and in and around blood vessel walls. Okay. So next is granulomatosis with polyangitis. Take it from the name. You have granulomatosis, granuloma, polyangitis, poly, many blood vessels. Particularly, you have uh, the, the lungs, no? lower respiratory tract, um, granulomas in the um, in uh, granulomas in the lower respiratory tract, upper respiratory tract at the same time in the kidneys. Okay? So, you have if it's widespread, it can uh, it can uh, affect the eyes, skin, and the heart. And it, it clinically resembles polyarthritis nodosa. As we said before, polyarthritis nodosa does not involve the lungs. Okay? And what's the pathology here? It's the deposition of the proteinase 3 anka. Okay, or the C anka. Okay, again, postimmune. So you have here what you have here um, vasculitis, small R3. Okay, then. I think this is the in the lungs, okay? You have granuloma in the lungs, okay? So you might mistake it as TB, huh? very much like TB. Next, this is Churg-Strauss syndrome. So when you hear, um, what do you call this? When you hear, um, a small uh, when you hear asthma, okay? One great feature here is asthma. Let me go back to the previous slide. Okay, you have asthma and granuloma. Okay, particularly asthma. When you hear asthma, immediately answer churg strauss syndrome. Okay, granulomatous, at the same time, you have an asthmatic patient. Okay, that is churg strauss syndrome. And it is secondary to a consequence of hyper-responsiveness to some normally harmless allergic stimulus. Okay? You can also see P. Anka. Okay? So, basta asthmatic, allergic rhinitis, church straws. Most especially when you see small vessels. So, these are examples of uh, this is a, a tabulation of uh, small vessel vasculitis. You can read, actually, the, uh, uh, other vasculitis are also mentioned here. You can also, you can read. Okay. There are also vasculitis that are associated with other non-infectious disorders, particularly disorders that are, uh, uh, that are, Autoimmune, such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, malignancy, and other systemic illnesses. Okay, so we're done with vasculitis. We go to disorders of blood vessel hyperreactivity. So, uh, what makes the blood vessel hyperreactive? It's because of the hyperreactive smooth muscle cells or the tunica media. Okay? And we have two, two examples here. First is uh, Reynolds phenomenon. Okay? Uh, if, if, um, if you have a patient no, that's uh, uh, an emotional patient uh, that, has, uh, that presents with uh, cold clam uh, a cyanotic cold clammy thing, um, hands or fingers, no? You, you might uh, uh, suspect Reynolds phenomenon. It's particularly in female patients. And, and yeah, exaggerated vasoconstriction of arteries and arterioles in response to cold or emo emotion. Okay? And what are the color changes? First, it, 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 it's, it's erythematous, becomes pale, and becomes cyanotic. So red, white, and blue. 
and it is the first manifestation of immune-mediated vasculitidis. If we're talking about secondary Raynaud phenomenon, okay? So here, primary. If it's primary, we see it in uh, hysterical patients, particularly female patients with symmet symmetrical distribution. No? However, uh, yeah, uh, what's the consequence? You have atrophy of skin, subcutaneous tissues, and muscles. Okay. Secondary, when we see it in patients that already have this uh, uh, di main diagnosis, yeah, Burgert's disease, okay, atherosclerosis, and it is asymmetric and ag aggravates through time. This is uh, the pallor. Okay? This is the cyanosis. Myocardial vessel vasospasm. Okay? This happens in uh, patients, no? uh, uh, in, in patients that have impending myocardial infarction or sudden cardiac death. Okay? Nagspasm ang so it's not only the it's, it's, not, it's not only the blockage secondary to thrombus that causes MI, but also spasm, which aggravates the um, entrapment or uh, what they call this the, the uh, entrapment of the blood flow, okay, or impediment of the blood flow. Okay. The factors in again intrinsic hyperreactivity of smooth muscle cells, high levels of vasoactive mediators. Particularly these sympathetic mediators, no? <laughs> elevated thyroid hormone, autoantibodies, and T cells in scleroderma. So let's go to the last portion. Okay. Veins and lymphatics. We go to varicose veins. Uh, so when we say varicose veins, this uh, deal, these veins have a defect already in the valves. Okay? Abnormally dilated, tortuous veins produced by prolonged increased intraluminal pressure with vessel dilation and incompetence of venous valves. And what's the main factor? Prolonged standing. No? If we are talking about uh, veins in your legs, okay? however, if you have uh, varicosities, Internally, so it is uh, such as in cirrhosis. Okay, of course we cannot bl blame it to prolonged standing. No, it's secondary to uh, cirrhosis, and all, we also have hemorrhoids. No, excessive straining. Take note of brony induration. Okay, as a consequence of varicose veins. No. It is the secondary to RBC hemolysis. And that's why varicose veins should not be ignored because it leads to, when, when, when it becomes injured, no? it leads to infection. Okay? However, embolism is rare because the veins, if you're talking about superficial veins, okay, are not as deep as what we have in deep vein thrombosis. So let's go to thrombophlebitis. So these uh, uh, these are terms: thrombophlebitis and phlebothrombosis. These are two interchangeable terms that lead that uh, refer to venous thrombosis and inflammation. So we're talking about DVT. So veins affected, deep ve deep leg veins. Okay. And what are the risk factors? You have decreased blood flow, so in, in bedridden patients, systemic hypercoagulability. Okay. So, for example, if the patient is um, diabetic, patient, uh, what you call this, uh, as a, a, a um, blood disorder. Okay. Uh, patient has cancer. Okay. And other pro-inflammatory conditions. I'm referring to obesity. No? Next, you have symptoms, pain, okay, in uh, dorsiflexion of the foot. That's what we call uh, common sign or or pain upon squeezing the scalp muscles. 
Okay? And what are the, the complications? Pulmonary embolism. Okay? Next. So we go to superior and inferior vena cava syndromes. This is, these are, these are uh, syndromes that are a consequence of an obstruction in the um, lymphatic flow, no? Yeah, in the lymphatic flow as well as in the blood vessels in, in, in the vascular. So you have, when we say superior vena cava syndrome, it's secondary to a, a compression by a mass in, uh, for example, in near the neck, no? When we, when we talk about lymphoma or, yeah, or here in inferior vena, cava, inferior vena cava syndrome, when we have neoplasms uh, or tumors that are obstructing the um, inferior vena cava, such as in um, hepatocellular or renal carcinoma. So what are the signs? No? So when we have obstruction, the blood flow is uh, in, um, blood and lymphatic flow is impeded. No? So this leads to it, it's very common no? among patients that have lymphoma. You have enlargement of the side of, of, of the particularly in the in the right in the, in the right side. No? You have enlargement of the right arm. You have cyanotic, cyan accompanied with cyanosis, and respiratory distress. And for the inferior vena cava syndrome, you have marked lower extremity edema. Okay. Lymphangitis and lymph edema. These are, uh, again, uh, uh, inflammation. No? Inflammation. Okay, but in but the inflammation it, it can be differentiated um, because the inflammation in lymphangitis is secondary to an infection. In lymphedema, it is secondary to an obstruction. Okay, so tumors also have parasites, filariasis. Okay, so you, you have uh, obstruction in the lymph flow, no? outflow of the Lymphatics. Lymphangitis leads to cellulitis or focal abscesses. Again, because it is a transidate. No? For lymph edema, you have infection. For lymph edema, you have edema. Okay. Uh, exudate here, exudate, this is transidate. So, yeah. So, lymphangitis, what's the sequelae? You have bacteremia or sepsis. For lymph edema, you have a podiorant appearance of the overlying skin. Okay? And ruptured lymphatics, skin ulceration. Okay? So, let's go to uh, vascular tumors. So, I, I won't be uh, dwelling much because uh, if I dwell too much, then we won't. Uh, we, we, won't we will finish uh, much much later. Okay. Anyway, the slides are very uh, informative. Uh, you can always read on them again. So vascular tumors. So what are uh, tumors that arise from the endothelial cells? Okay or also cells to support or surround blood vessels. Okay? So, yeah, this is the distinction between benign and malignant vascular tumors. However, it's very, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to distinguish because uh, they, they, because you, you see, um, there is a very, uh, because this, uh, simi uh, they are very much similar. Okay. So,
So these are the examples. Benign, you have for benign conditions and two tumor, you benign tumors and tumor-like conditions. You have vascular ectasias, hemangiomas, lymphangiomas, lomus tumor, and bacillary angiomatosis. When we talk about vascular ectasias, okay, these are um, dilatations of a, a blood vessel. Okay? What are the examples? Nevus plemus, which is a birthmark, okay, which presents with uh, a, a light pink no? or deep purple flat lesion. Okay. And it is one example is a port wine stain in a, an infant, okay, which is distributed along the trigeminal nerve associated with surge Weber syndrome. Next, we have spider telangiectasia. It's very common in cirrhotic, cirrhotic patients because of the entrapment of estrogen. Okay. Next, you have uh, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia or the osler weber rendu disease. It's a genetic mutation in the TGF factor signaling pathway leads to dilated capillaries and veins present at birth. Okay. Hemangiomas. These are tumors. Tumors uh, which are composed of blood-filled blood vessels. Okay. And what are the examples? We have capillary hemangiomas. If it, in, if it involves capillaries, we have juvenile hemangiomas, we have pyogenic granulomas, and we have cavernous hemangiomas. Okay. If it deals with an infant, okay, uh, and, and it regresses, that is most likely juvenile hemangioma. The other term is strawberry type hemangioma. Um, Pyogenic granuloma is also uh, a type of capillary hemangioma. Okay? If it involves the oral mucosa, then most likely that is a pyogenic granuloma. One type of pyogenic granuloma is a granuloma gravinarum found in the gingiva of pregnant women. How about cavernous hemangioma? It, 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 it is a uh, hemangioma um, that are found in cavernous vascular spaces. Okay. And it does not regress spontaneously. Okay. It involves deeper organs such as the brain and the other organs such as the pancreas and the liver. Von Hippolinda disease. Okay, and those are the, so the first one is capillary hemangioma of the tongue. The second one is uh, the juvenile capillary hemangioma. Cavernous, this is cavernous, if I'm not mistaken, uh, cavernous uh, um, deals on the veins, no? if I'm not mistaken. Please check in the book. Pyogenic granuloma. Okay. This very much looks like a capillary hemangioma. Okay. Of course, because it is a, a type of capillary hemangioma. Next, lymphangio, lymphangio, lymphangiomas. Okay. Lymphangiomas, these are lymphatic counterparts of hemangioma. Whether you have a simple lymphangioma or a cavernous lymphangioma. Okay. The other term for cavernous lymphangioma, these are cystic hygromas okay. associated with Turner's syndrome. Globus tumor. These are benign but painful tumors that. Um, 
arise from modified smooth muscle cells of glomus glomus bodies okay so super, superficially resemble hemangiomas but arise from smooth muscle cells rather than endothelial cells basiliary angiomatosis is uh, found among immunocompromised patients and it is secondary to an infection by Bartonella, Bartonella henselae or Bartonella quintana. No? This, this uh, Bartonella henselae causes uh, cat scratch disease. And what are the presentations? Red papules and nodules or sub rounded subcutaneous masses and capillary proliferation. Okay? Dr um, pathophysiology, you have endothelial growth factor production. And it very much looks like a hemangioma. So you have to look into the history. The patient has a uh, um, history of a cat scratch disease okay? or a, a, a what they call this, a, a pet cat. It might be bacillary angiomatosis. Next, intermediate grade tumors, particularly Kaposi's sarcoma. Clinically relevant because it is highly, highly, it is a, a, an in, initial or early manifestation of AIDS. Okay? Actually, it is a, a skin manifestation of AIDS. Okay? However, Kaposi's sarcoma also has different forms. No? If it's seen among, Ashken among uh, Ashkenazi Jews or Mediterranean uh, population, it is a classic form. Okay? Asymptomatic. However, in endemic African, of course, it's found in African patients, uh, HIV individuals, and younger patients. Okay? Transplant associated, when the patient uh, receives um, a, a T cell, um, a, a T cell immunosuppression, okay? and it is aggressive, but clinically relevant, this is a Kaposi sarcoma found in AIDS patients. So in Kaposi sarcoma, you have altered T cell immunity and infection by what's the virus? The human herpes virus. Okay? Transmitted sexually via oral secretions and cutaneous exposure. So you can read the rest. And what are the stages of the cutaneous progression? You have first macules that are red, red to purple macules. Or you have violaceous raised plaques, okay, turning into neoplastic nodules. And this is the gross appearance. So first stage, red purple macules. So you have plump proliferating spindle cells, okay, that is. Kaposi's sarcoma. Hemangio endothelioma uh, is again another intermediate, intermediate um, um, vascular tumor. Okay, again, plump and cuboidal neoplastic cells. Okay, not very clinically relevant. Next, angiosarcoma. These are malignant uh, neoplasms of the endothelium, but these are rare. Okay. It can be highly, differenti highly differentiated or highly uh, undifferentiated. Okay. And clinically relevant are two examples, lymphangiosarcoma, which involves the lymphatic vessels, and hepatic angiosarcoma, which is, of course, involves uh, vessels in the liver. Okay. And exposures, take note, to most particularly polyvinyl chloride. Where do you find polyvinyl chloride? 
these are found in plastics. So um, the the polyvinyl chloride when uh, when plastics are heated or subjected to very low temperatures, it releases this polyvinyl chloride um, or some forms no, or mutations of polyvinyl chloride that will cause hepatic angiosarcoma. And this is the um, angiosarcoma in the right ventricle. Okay, take note, um, one feature also is uh, staining with CD31. So that is uh, vascular tumor summary. So pathology of vascular intervention. So for example, when you have a patient now that needs stenting, okay, or a surgery, bypass ter surgery, Okay, these are not without dangers because of one um, consequence that is what we call fibromuscular intimal hyperplasia. And this is dangerous because uh, it leads to what? Narrowing of the lumen and, and affecting the blood flow. Okay? Of course, Increasing the blood pressure, affecting the blood flow, and in the end, you have ischemia, you have, you have heart attack, you have a um, kidney problem, okay, a hypoperfusion of the kidneys, okay, and what have you. And we have um, two types, no? You have endovascular stenting, okay, and what is the pathophysiology here? You have uh, the pathophysiology is basically endothelial injury. These foreign ma materials, for example, when, when I talk about stenting or this uh, um, grafting, such as in, a, in grafting using the saphenous vein into the, one of the um, coronary arteries, okay, leads to endothelial injury. Okay. So both of them, whether you have endovascular stenting Okay, so coronary stent placement is being um, used along with uh, a balloon angioplast angioplasty to prevent abrupt reclosure due to luminal compression. Okay, however, you have to we have to check on the blood vessel from time to time because this will lead to again in the long term intimal thickening. What's the, what's the um, histological uh, feature? You have fibromuscular intimal hyperplasia. Vascular replacement, again, this leads to hy intimal hyperplasia in the long run. Okay? As well as thrombosis. Not to mention, not to mention infection. No? So this is the this is the, the, the I think the black one. So the gross view demonstrating residual yellow sclerot atherosclerotic plaque no? with a concentric intimal lesion inside that plaque. Imagine no? the black diamond here is a stent. Stent wire. Okay? And the intima, the thickened intima, I think it's the, the whole thing. Okay? Thickened new intima separating and overlying the stent wires. Again, another example of intimal hyperplasia. Here. Okay, this is the stent. This is the blood vessel. Again, this one. I think this is the graft or, or the stent, the foreign body, and uh, the intimal hyperplasia. Thank you so much, and thank you for listening.